What's up, guys? <clears throat> I can see two people already on the stream. If some of you could just let me know uh, if you can hear me, it would be great. My plan is to play, um, just do some stretching mostly. I don't really want to damage myself anymore. I'm getting ready for uh, Oleg Tudorian in a week. And I thought I could simply do a live stream because it's somehow more fun. I was I was already thinking for a while to uh, to somehow uh, you know come here, sit a little bit and stretch, but it's quite boring if there's nothing to do. So I thought, enjoy watching your training from Canada. Oh, cool! That's from Canada. It's not really training today. I'm just kind of stretching. I thought, uh, why not setting this up and somehow maybe I will, it will even help me to stretch more and feel better. Okay, yes, yes, loud and clear. That's good. Okay, so guys, I'll just sit here, uh, talk about everything you want to hear, and uh, we can have some fun. Just a lazy Thursday, Thursday evening. I'm working from home tomorrow, so I don't have to really, it's a bit more relaxed. I guess I'll just warm up little by little and then maybe commit for a couple more minutes just I'm mostly working on this um, on a special kind of lock, which I can use against uh, some of the opponents, especially the ones who are trying to try to press on me. I need a little bit of that side pressure like this. <clears throat> and I'm wearing my Armors t-shirt. Armors was pretty cool and fun even though we cannot really talk too much about the results yet or the matches themselves but um, you know no matter what happened I'm sure everyone is still waiting for those videos um, yeah I'm also just really quite excited about the armors it's something something different something new feel like it might really elevate the sport again to the new new heights, new levels. When will Armour's video, videos come out? So, um, from what I heard, uh, it had to be 11 or 10 weeks after the event, which means... Hello, hello which means that um, we are almost halfway in. So I would maybe guess that we have another five, six weeks, which is yeah quite a long time. But the worst thing is that I'm not even sure if my video is coming out first or not. You know, we, made, we had so we made so we filmed so many matches. So I'm afraid that some of the matches might really take a, take forever to come out. But let's see. It is a bit weird to somehow to be quiet like this. Oh yeah, I'm destroying my house a little bit. It should be okay. I, will, I might need to repaint the, those bricks. But it's okay. I'm 
but yeah, having a table here in the in the living room, well, almost in the living room, is is quite comfortable, quite convenient. Yo, Mindo. Yeah, hello, hello everyone. Not not too many people watching at the moment, but let's see. Maybe maybe we will get more and more. Or I'll, what are you really doing? I'm just kind of stretching at the moment. This is maybe the only thing I can. Well, not the only thing, but statically, I still want to do something quite light like this. And I cannot really do anything more than this. Since I have this match in a week with Oleg Tutorian, I start following you after watching your match against Jeff Hale. Your pronation was really good. Yes, yes, that was a cool match. I was really happy it went so well. Um, sometimes, uh, I don't know, I like to make those matches look easy, even if they are not. And if I can succeed, if I can talk a lot of trash and still successfully beat the guy, it's a, I consider it a great ach achievement. So that's what I'm normally aiming for. Many of uh, our Europeans, they are a bit quiet. They don't really want to talk any trash. They want to be very respectful, but um, it is, I think, a little bit boring. Maybe it's even easier to be respectful and then go into a fight, and then if you lose, it's still okay. I think it's much more difficult to talk a lot of trash and then uh, worry about losing. But also, you know, if you do, if you do, if you do it and then still win, it's uh, it's the greatest thing ever, I think. And that's what we are aiming for. Hi, Francesco. What's up? How are you? Devon Larat is in the same city as me, king of the table trash. Even though that I have known you for a couple of years, I still can phantom how strong you are. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hey, brother, would love to see your match versus Bojidar or Frode Hoagland. I'm not sure if I should talk about one of the things, but um, uh, it seems that um, my match with uh, Oleg Tudorian will determine um, who is going to fight Bojidar next. So it's either me or, um, or Oleg. So there is a chance that you will see me fighting Bojidar again. And I am really thinking about fighting him myself for quite a while already. So yeah, that would be pretty cool, but I still need to go through uh, Oleg first. Francesco, great, going to table practice just now. Hope everything's, yeah, everything's perfect. Francesco was the guy who came here and joined and visited me for us, from Italy. It was pretty cool to train with him right before the match with Tom Holland. But yeah, fighting Borjadar um, seems scary, but at the same time, I felt him already last year at one of these uh, Turkish events. Um, I think it was called Golden Golden Arm or something like that, organized by Engin. 
and uh, yeah, I did lose, but um, I had a good opportunity to feel what it's like. So um, even this exercise here is uh, maybe the main thing I should be doing to get ready for Borjador. I cannot allow him to jump on me and press my hand downwards too much. I have to defend the center. But yeah, let's not think about Borjdar yet. Um, Oleg Todorian is still a beast. And uh, I was watching some of the, his latest uh, videos. Just a very impressive guy. Quite fast as well, which I don't like. It's normally better if I can just engage slowly. Yeah, Oleg is quite a mountain to climb, isn't he? For sure he is, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if I ever met him. Maybe we didn't even meet him, meet ever. But, um, but we pulled quite a lot, I think, on the side tables, so at least European or World Championships. Oleg is a good friend uh, of uh, Daniel Prokopchuk. So, um, and yeah, Oleg somehow is a bit bigger now. Not too much bigger, but still. I remember he once he was also in a, in the same category as me, 70 kilo. But then he climbed up to 75 and 80 now. So weight difference is of course something I don't necessarily like too much, but I feel like I can beat him anyway, so it doesn't really matter. He's still coming down to under 80 kilos, so I think that should be good enough. I wrote a comment on your last video, but you probably didn't see it. Or just not topic we want to. So I ask again, and if you don't want to discuss it, that's okay for me. Yes, yes, go on, ask about it, no problem. Anything you want to know. So the, maybe one of the bigger improvements I'm working on in the last couple of years is the triceps, which somehow help, adds me, gives me some elbow strength. Maybe one day it will be good enough to beat uh, Daniel Prokopchuk. I feel like I'm not too far away. Seems like you are a natural athlete and some of your white category guys are definitely not. You know the kitchen from within, and also are you planning to take TRT down the road? So yeah, I know many, everyone is somehow very suspicious about these top level athletes, but from, yeah, from what I know, and I do try to talk to people and figure figure out if they are using something or not. Somehow still most of the top level guys are still, at least in these lightweight classes, I don't think they are really taking anything. Of course, they are loading up on supplements and everything else, but, um, but I'm not really um, sure if I can uh, definitely um, say that someone is on juice, you know. We, we know people like, uh, for example, Krasovskis, Vladislav Krasovskis, looks like a beast, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's not really taking anything. And um, that's how you know that sometimes genetics are just... Uh, crazy good and some people yeah they might look like we are on juice but they are they are not necessarily on it 
TRT. Yeah, it's probably I'm not sure about it. It's, it's, I think I have another 20 years before I do any of that. Hello, Zirakli. What's up? Did you pull Oleg in Moldova? So you talk about Oleg Tudorian, I assume. No, I did not. I think in Moldova. We had two events in Moldova, I think in 2018 or 17. One of them was a tournament type of event, which where I was under 70 kilo, Oleg was under 78, I guess. So we did not meet each other. And then another one, another event was simply a super match event. Well, no, I don't think I ever really met Oleg Tudorian officially. When is your match with Tudorian? Uh, it's on March 12th, which is in what, nine days? Oleg Cherkasso, oh, it was this guy. Yeah, I did pull Cherkasso in Moldova. It would be nice to pull Cherkasov again because it um, seems like my technique is it somehow advantageous against him. I met Oleg Cherkasov twice and beat him once on the left and another time on the right. I think on the left I met him in the semi-finals, some European or maybe Europeans or even worse, I don't, I don't even remember. And I managed to beat him. And then this other time on the right was in Moldova. Yeah, Cherkasov's kryptonite. It's pretty crazy how me, Daniel, and Cherkasov, we are stuck in this triangle. Well, Cherkasov. Oh, ah, yeah, Cherkasov is somehow almost beating Daniel. Um, and Daniel is beating me, I'm beating Cherkasov. But you know, you never know. Uh, I still want to remind people that I beat uh, Daniel Prokopchuk last year in Turkey. Um, it was a good day for me, but when I uh, lost against him at Europeans, which was not a very good day for me, I think on a good day I can I can really fight Oleg already now. Yeah, this uh, the last European championship championship ended up being quite bad for me. I got a bit ill and sick and couldn't sleep all night barely pulled through the classes and ended up being second but then yeah, Daniel looked looked good I should even keep in mind that uh, if I meet Daniel in in some tournament class I should probably even um, avoid fighting him early in the class it's much better to just leave that fight until the end because otherwise it's really hard to come back through all the other strong guys but yeah i'm still i think give me another year or two i want to start beating daniel constantly and with no not too much trouble that's a goal. Yeah, I wonder how... What about the Armenian guy in 70 kilo? Uh, Emil Emir Shadian. Oh, Emil Amir Shadian. Yeah, that's a great guy. Still probably, I don't know, I would still consider him the best in the world under 17. Even also above Daniel. He was a little bit out of shape recently, but I think he's starting to work again. 
it's a coincidence I, I actually had a quite a long chat with him I think last week with Emil Amershadien Emil uh, brought me and told me about some um, tournament in Chechenia in Russia and uh, initially I said that uh, I'm not going not going because I think it was already supposed to happen like a week ago but then they cancelled uh, or postponed until May and then I got a little bit interested I thought because the money was good I think they had six thousand dollars for first place four thousand for second and so on um but yeah the Armenian guy Emile Mishardian is just still very good but yeah also I haven't really met him in a while so things have changed most likely I'm also not the same as, uh, as I used to be I wonder if he climbed as fast as I did. Okay, I'll just try to sit in one place. Um, very, very minimal loading and just see if I can um, just maybe rest on my bones and and let the muscles stretch a little bit. Any more questions, guys? Yeah, um, I can talk a little bit about um, the match, uh, yeah, the European Championships, uh, um, and mostly the matches with Daniel Prokopchuk. Um, yeah, since I didn't feel that great on those days and somehow ended up being ill, um, I knew that um, I was planning to go to the World Championship in Romania, which was uh, in, in a month after the Europeans. So I can always be a bit more aggressive, but um, I just checked uh, the stopple a little bit on my left, I remember. Um, felt like, yeah, the elbow doesn't feel ready for for a proper fight. So I thought, okay, let, let me just um, take it easy. I went back in, into a hook just to protect my elbow. And I thought I would uh, maybe fight harder at Worlds in Romania but then I uh, didn't even go to Worlds because of what happened the medals and stuff is there any weight cap for your match with Oleg yes uh, so this weight cap is 80 kilo mostly for Oleg as well of, of course I'm 76 77 um I was told that Oleg initially was 86 kilo, uh, but I'm not sure if that's true. Because uh, we had a short chat last week with him and he was already 80, 81. So it doesn't look like he had to lose too much somehow. What is your PR? on um, added weight when you do pull-ups last week i think i did um a couple of reps like three three reps of uh, 52 kilo the most i have tried is uh, 60 kilo and i think i did uh, four reps no yeah but I like pull-ups, I, I think it's a good exercise. 
but also sometimes I, it gives me some troubles recently also in the, in the back muscle. So I have to be careful. What, what do you think top row or hook is more healthy on the long run for your joints? I think both of them are equally healthy. It's not really a problem, but you have to be careful. Of course, you have to be smart. Maybe it's the risk is higher with um, the hook because you might just make a mistake and it's a, it's an easier mistake to make and you might get injured. But I still wouldn't say that top roll is any any healthier or safer. You know, when you do top roll and someone is trying to flop wrist press on you quite quickly, you can also get damaged in the elbow, be damaged. How many times per week do you train is also interesting. Borjo in the recent interview said that three times per day, mostly bands plus practice. Yes, I'm quite happy that I can um, do these short blood flow workouts at work, normally during my lunch break. Uh, otherwise, I would always, I'm always doing two table practices per week. One of them is quite serious, and our one is just uh, whatever, you know. We have a smaller group here in Copenhagen gathering on Thursday, and then a bigger group gathering on Monday. So Monday is the main day. Thursday is just to, just to train quite lightly a little bit. But yeah, otherwise I'm still somehow doing some things every day nowadays. Even if it's a blood flow thing, it's you need to eat a lot more beef to hit 80 kilo. Yeah, trying to eat uh, meat, but also fat if possible. I was eating some pancakes, not like Devon pancakes, but normal pancakes. Uh, the last couple of weeks and it didn't feel so good like I don't know, sugar so my body just doesn't like sugar anymore any other matches on that event where is it happening so the, me and oleg we meet in um, manchester where is a promoter in uk um, i think he made a couple of, uh, of events before and um, he's now doing it again. Is there, uh, so any other matches? Let me think. Um, there might, yeah, there might be a couple. I think Kyle is fighting someone. Maybe, maybe Adrian Odwire. Or um, yeah, I don't remember these names too well. But uh, I think there are a couple more super matches, and then we have a tournament next to it can you do one arm pull up i'm pretty sure i can but i haven't done it in a long time i'm sure it's not it won't be too easy just because um, i'm used to these static uh, holds much more than uh, dynamic you know my muscle doesn't really want to be so dynamic do you use creatine Yes, I have tried it and used it, um, but now lately, uh, lately I did extremely well without uh, without any creatine. Yeah, my especially my worst experience was at these last Europeans. I took some creatine, maybe too much, or um, maybe didn't drink enough water together with it. Felt like it really like a drain absorbed all the so much water and I felt so dry afterwards, and then I slept the 
couldn't sleep for a whole night and then my throat uh, had a sore throat because of it just being super dry so now i hate creatine i, I will i don't think i will ever use it again What do you think? Who wins between John and Iraqli? Huh. Okay. 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 So I, w I would say John, but I can see Iraqli having a chance as well. Mm, but still, yeah, my guess is John because um, John is just. I think he's just stronger in a slow pull. Yes, there might be a risk for him to lose his wrist, but uh, he knows it and he had quite some time already to fix that problem. So I think John will, will handle it directly. Is my diet mostly carnivore? Um, I want to say yes. But also, I'm I'm cheating quite a lot. Um, I was trying to eat some sugar a couple of weeks before these competitions, and then uh, just to make sure that I'm somehow carved up. But then, yeah, if if there's no competition coming up, I will stay on something yeah, very um, very keto. Yeah. Just having my energy from um, fat, not sugar. Exactly, you need to start curling more. Yes, yeah, Zirakli is clearly a fan of Zirakli. Yeah, it's interesting how um, how Iraqli is now so committed to be big and um, and muscular and so on. Top exercises for pronation that I recommend. Um, I would really recommend. Uh, using not using the pronation too much just trying to you know don't really pronate try to keep your arm in a neutral position and maybe apply more back pressure which would result in your opponent um, losing his wrist instead of uh, attacking with your pronator But yeah, are there any exercises? We can use some rubber band and do something like this, I guess. Nothing really comes to my mind at the moment. Maybe more important to me is, uh, is this posting exercise. I made one video about uh, pronation, how oh, I'm not really training it too much. You can try to check that out. Is it actually going to be Levansai soon? Yeah, I don't think he can be that big, but... Um, but for sure he's getting very, very big lately. It must be cool to be so committed, but also on the other hand, I'm not sure if I would, if I would like it. I don't think I would ever be so committed. And we don't, uh, you know, Iraq used to be, you could say, yeah, he's kind of a champion. 70, 75 kilo, but now he got bigger. And I don't really think that he's a champion anymore. 
if you go if you would even go to um, WAF I know he couldn't now but he, let's say he would maybe he wouldn't even win anymore because his weight is just um, too big Well, Heracli has a long arm, so he could maybe he have a size, maybe still helps him a bit. Heracli's first WF title was at 65. Oh, cool. Must be juniors, right? Yeah, this guy is probably from Georgia. Andrea Yak Veladze. Sounds like a Georgian surname. Yeah, I remember. What am I training at the moment? I'm just stretching, just stretching. Mostly the joint here in the this area in the elbow i wanted to sit comfortably it's somehow um, easier to catch those sideways hits if i'm if i'm ready because i'm i'm always gonna kind of topple like this and if a guy hits me this way my elbow has to be conditioned to catch that I feel like this kind of stretching really helped me lately. I know it looks a bit stupid, but uh, it's like a goose, but uh, but it feels good. That's crazy to gain that much. Even Georgian struggled to pronounce it, so... <laughs> Yakveladze, Yakveladze, I don't know. Which match did you like the most at East versus West event? Mm, let me remember, let me remember. We were watching it here. I think we had 10 guys from the club, it was pretty fun, but let me remember what... Ah, this guy... A Georgian guy, Tabberitze, Zurab Tabberitze versus uh, Ron Bath. That was a cool match, right? I think that was my favorite. I really disliked the match between John and, uh, and Zoloyev because. Uh, it was weird how one of them seemed to be injured and then there's almost no point. I felt like there's no point in doing these kind of matches where one of the guys is not not at his best. Yeah, Ron Bath and Zura, they did really great. I will be Daniel next time. Yeah, I think I, I think I will. Prudnik looked good as well. Yeah, Prudnik looked so solid. That right arm, especially, is just. Extremely solid. It's a, it's a, I don't know. To me, it's a pity that Prudnik also went. Seems like he went to the dark side. Um, I felt like he could have been such a such a great armor slur. I wonder if it's hard for him to maintain that mass. How do you train side pressure? Well, for side pressure, of course, it gets stronger little by little on the table. 
but also lately I'm I'm always making sure to um, do a lot of triceps exercises because triceps and biceps together we they are able they are stabilizing your elbow so you can apply more more side pressure and yeah, maybe I should do some some hook. How does your top five look, look like now? Do you mean a top five um, heavyweight, like super heavyweight, top five in the world? Is that what you mean? Have you pulled Jordan Davis in practice table last time during Elmore's? Yes, I did pull Jordan Davis. It looks like I could. Uh, destroy him but um, you never know maybe he was not trying hard I would like to have a match with Jordan by the way yeah. I think it would be an easy one for me and quite an exciting one Yanis versus Mindaugas. Yeah, I'm still hoping to be to meet Yanis in the near future. Let's hope it happens soon. When will your armors match will be released? Uh, I'm not sure. The earliest, I guess, is in uh, five to six weeks. But then, if it's not. Um, it could still be some other match, not my match, right? And we are doing one, we are releasing one match per week. So I'm hoping that it's not gonna take too long because it could, theoretically some of the matches will really take a while. But yeah, Jordan is a little bit unpredictable. Every time I pulled him on the side table, it felt it felt quite easy. But then um, when he pulls some other guys, it still looks like he's quite good and strong. So I wonder it myself, like how hard would it be to be to beat Jordan Davis? Yeah, Zirakli didn't. Uh, What's my record versus Yanis? I think officially I only beat him once in, in one of the competitions. I remember I had a very good year, uh, summer. I was a student here in Copenhagen. And um, I was at the same time working as a, um, you could say a construction worker laying down these uh, pavement bricks to make the path around the house or something like that. So my my hands were really working hard all day. And when I came back uh, to my hometown back in Lithuania for, for some holiday, two weeks holiday, I kept eating uh, all the good food from made by my mother. And then two weeks later, we went to Riga there was a competition. Uh, and Yanis, Karsovskis were uh, both competing under 78, I'm guessing. But then I was, I think at the time, only 72 kilo, uh, and I still beat them both. I remember my hand just felt very good on that day. So officially I, I only beat Yanis once and I lost Quite many, like three, four times. I don't even remember now. But, but then unofficially, I met Yanis. We had a super match in Riga, just to test, just to see what's going on. I think 2019, and then I was very happy about the result. I did well, so I am quite confident that I'm. Um, I'm super close. So chances are very good against Yanis.
my opinion about Bojdar Simeonov. So yeah, Bojdar, um, extremely good hook puller. Normally, um, I guess hook technique is somehow beaten by the top row, by a good top row. But I'm not sure about uh, Bojdar because Bojdar is not only trying to get me in, he's really hitting sideways hard and pressing me downwards and if i'm not able to take that hit it's not fun anymore so by the way if i beat oleg to dorian seems like i can fight bojidar next also in manchester uk so there's a chance that i could uh, meet him again quite soon okay zirakli rakashvili top five current super heavyweights current okay so let's say um, um, Levan is the first one and then um, um, a little bit off topic but Devon could actually be pretty high right now uh, just because it's not really the same devil as as we used to know him I think pancakes will really elevate them to the next level so um, I wouldn't be surprised if Devon is able to win against Levan but let's say um, Levan is the first at the moment I would say Devon is the second one on the right uh, and then what do we have next? Normally, I'm not really thinking much about these heavyweights. But if you give me a couple of minutes, I can try to... Yeah, who else do we have? I should try to take a look at one of the rankings made by Engen and see if it makes sense. Ah, we have, okay, we have Laletin, we have Kurdecha. Um, these two are for sure in the top five. Ah, and I remember some people were in, in were uh, taking Hermes also into top five. But I don't really want to do that. Let me think who could... For example, Prudnik could beat Hermes, so let's say on the right arm, Prudnik is number five. Okay, now let's be reasonable. Levan is number one, Vitali number two, Kurdechen number three, Devo number four, Prudnik number five. That's my top five. Love to see you pull the winner of Corey Miller versus Yannis Ambulance. Well, I keep yeah, I keep seeing those Corey Miller matches, and I don't think Corey can really do much of Yannis. So, um, but yeah, you. Let's hope we can see me versus Yannis quite soon, and Yannis will of course be demolished. Do you think Ryan has a chance versus Borjidar? I don't think Ryan has a chance, but I'm still gonna watch it. You know, some of these matches are maybe the most fun. You know, people from different continents meeting each other and seeing where's the level at. Seems like Engen also started to eat some pancakes after you beat him. It's like, got suspiciously stronger since then. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. But I talked to him. He he's trying to say that no, he didn't do anything. So I have to believe him. He's still one of the greatest. So if he if he is determined, maybe he can he can do it. I don't know. I'm very, very careful about blaming people. 
about using something because um, I know that almost everything is possible. Look at me here, a skinny guy, being able to still almost look at work quite well. So. Who you got on Prudnik versus Hutchings if they both go and hook? Mm, yeah, Hutchings looked incredibly well recently. Yeah, it's almost like 50 50. They are, they are both looking great. Maybe we can see that match soon, right? Wasn't, wasn't Engin talking about it already? I don't think Prudnik would go in uh, too much. I think he would try to be explosive and he would try to just finish. So if you go in slowly, Prudnik versus um, Hutchings, I think maybe Hutchings can still take it. But I don't think it will happen like that, I think. Yeah, I think Prudnik will um, try to um, go around that power. Engin looked like different human versus Burrell. Hard to believe he improved that much at this age. Yeah, maybe the, the thing which is the most suspicious is Engin being quite weak. Um, 2015, 16, 17, something like that. He was not that great, and it looked like he is going down. Maybe, and then it's him suddenly being amazing. Yeah, that's a bit suspicious, but who knows? Maybe, maybe this additional weight which he gained is somehow helping him. I don't know. Todd Hutchings is uh, from a lower planet. Yeah. That's crazy, but how good he is. Uh, Hutchings needs to slip for a strap if that happens. Yeah, I think he can do it. He, it's it's weird how uh, Hutchings was not able to defeat Zoloyev and somehow lost the top role. But um, maybe now it's in, he's a bit more... Uh, I don't know, serious, angry, I don't know. I would be pretty angry if I couldn't slip and I would lose like that. My friend told me you did calisthenic, calisthenics before on wrestling. Is that true? And does it help you a lot? So I'm not sure if, if I can call it calisthenics because I was only pretty much just doing pull-ups and nothing else. But yeah, throughout my teenage years, I... Uh, I really like to do some pull-ups and um, I think it helped me to um, maybe grow my hand a little bit more and so on. The best exercise for wrist with a rubber band. I'm, I'm always, if I'm using a rubber band, I'm simply walking backwards like that with no movement, quite static. It could also be some kind of, you know, um, this kind of pressure or even this kind of thing. So the, uh, the whole arm is static, everything is static, and I'm just moving backwards with my body, that's what I like the most. Ah, Yep, hey weakling. Hello Yep, hello, what's up? I'm skipping, yeah, I was skipping the practice today. Normally we train on Thursday, but I'm just trying to kind of rest already. I'm sure Yep was trying hard.
Jeppe is the, is the tall guy from our club in Denmark, Copenhagen. Two meters, one centimeter, might be might be a star someday. Looks like he's very promising. But let's see. So yeah, but don't forget to train hard. Yeah, I like, I like how this uh, stretching workout is going. Feels pretty good. I'm, uh, since I'm looking at your questions, guys, I'm, I almost forget that I'm also training. What do you think about Talgat's performance in uh, 85 kilo? Huh. Good question. Which place did he get? I I cannot remember when. I'm sure he's still explosive, but I don't remember which. How did he do in these la latest tournaments? He wasn't first, was he? Yeah, I guess I'm just bad at following all these results. If it's not my class, I, I, I tend to forget it. He only wins one match, I think. Ooh, ouch. Okay, that's good. He, that motherfucker deserves to lose. No, I, I really dislike his style because he's um, not necessarily that strong just tries to be super quick and explosive if he gets a false start then he's happy if he doesn't get he loses he lo loses his style is just quite um, it's almost like a lottery if he gets a good start he can flash a guy but then if he doesn't he's not that good anymore It's, it's even super hard to train with him on the side table or because he's he can only almost barely go. He cannot do any slow pulls. Yeah, this, this latest, no, I, I met him at Worlds in 2018 and luckily I did beat him and on the left my left was bad but on the right I did beat him during the preliminary uh, fights and when I met him again in the semi-final I did beat him again in the semi-final um, but yeah um, he was very explosive. I, I caught him. I think at the time I was pretty aware of, of what I should be doing against him. And I did it successfully. And then I met him again uh, last year, I think, in Turkey. The second event with um, the 78 kilo golden arm by Engin Terzi. And then I think I, I beat the first opponent, which was the Georgian coach uh, what's his name I don't remember now but and then I met Talgat and Talgat just flashed me but uh, after all I think it was a clear uh, false start and and an elbow foul so I was pretty sad because it was only one one fight and then that's it and I felt pretty good on that day so it was a, such a pity to to be pushed out of the, dropped out of the competition just because some guys fall started and, and elbow foul. It's very annoying. But the referees are sometimes, they cannot even see what's happening. 
almost all Kazakhs are same. Yeah, many of the Kazakhs are really fast. But also it's sometimes, you know, not all Kazakhs have the same build as Talgat. Talgat is maybe one of the taller, longer ones. And his direction is like triceps press direction. Triceps press direction. So, um, ah, one more thing. Maybe I did make a mistake against Talgat last year because um, I forgot. I forgot the setup, and the setup is quite important. You cannot really contest his uh, side pressure. That's a mistake. The elbow should be. You should be really be kind of running away from him. Um, and then maybe it's even a good idea to go into the referee's grip because the referee's grip um, prevents him from doing all these false starts. He seems to be a bit more slow in the referee's grip. And I didn't do any of that. I was almost trying to contest his side pressure and then it didn't go on. So the next time I know what to do. What do you think about the Kirsten Prodigy versus Boris Darcy Mellon match? Yeah, I remember it. I heard this guy, about this guy Kirsten. I wasn't too interested because I, I seemed like some just some random guy, not very well known. And uh, but since the match was so hyped up, I I thought, okay, let's take a look at this Kirsten. Who is who is that guy? And I watched a couple of videos of him. Maybe just a one single training video. And I immediately understood that Bordor is gonna crush him. Um, so I think I kind of that's I didn't imagine Kirsten getting injured, but I kind of saw the way it would go. So yeah, very it's a pity of course that uh, Kirsten got injured, but I think the community is helping him to Ah, I remember I also right it right after it happened, I told my friend here we were we were watching it together. I told my friend that he must now go quickly and get that operation as soon as possible because I know that normally these operations they uh, like biceps reattachment things they take some time and uh, in some countries, yeah, the public sector might really not be so quick about it. So you might have to, yeah, you need to pay some money. You might need to pay some money to do it, to do it quickly. Because if you don't do it quickly, the biceps is also getting shorter and shorter. And it might not be possible to reattach it um, in a good way. So it's a very dangerous thing. You should really get that operation done as soon as possible. I think you pulled Otar. Ah, I don't remember that name, Otar Tavar Kalidze, but I think I did pull him. Another Georgian, maybe he even won against me on my left. Any predictions on John versus Engen? Yeah, I think John will win. I was talking to Engen a little bit today. And uh, he didn't seem to. Yeah, it seems like Engin had some problems. But um, but it would for sure be very interesting to see if Engin can do something at his best. You know, I'm pretty sure it will be a quite a good match, Engin versus John, if Engin is just healthy and fresh. Just because I know that Engin recently, yeah, we all know how good is Engin recently. Mm. Can you talk about Engin Terzi pulling style and what do you, what he do does differently than pulling a top roll versus a hooker? Um, I think he, yeah, he is of course adjusting his style a little bit, but. Sometimes he think, thinks about controlling the opponent's pronation. He doesn't, so he's trying to cup a little bit. 
sometimes he's only trying uh, defense with a pronation of his own it's a it's a good style it's a, also his you know his old joints are nicely locked up the the wrist doesn't even go back you know just like not, not at all so that helps him also Will Engen be in Perzang in Norway? No, I'm not going to Norway, but it uh, seems like Berzang will beat Engen. Kirsten said he would beat Borsdor in straps if he didn't get injured. Delusional guy. <laughs> European version of... Did he really say that after getting injured? Oh my god. Yeah, some of these guys are just a little bit delusional. Yeah, still the match between Bowen and uh, Borsdor will be pretty cool because even if you know what Borsdor is better, it's still nice to see it. It was very clear that uh, Kirsten wouldn't be able to do anything in any way. Top roll versus top roll on what should I focus the most to win? Yeah, it's quite... Whenever you are a top roller, top roller and you are facing another top roller, it's actually quite a hard match because you are both trying to fight for the post. Post and um you know if you are maybe let's say equally strong or just a little bit weaker you might you, yeah you will probably just lose quite easy easily if you just do the same thing maybe it's a good idea to drag a little bit because you know the other guy is posting a lot meanwhile you can just drag a bit and kick him out at his angle that might work quite well against a um, pure top roller. Bowen thinks he can beat Boji because he has a quadratic fist. Lol. Yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. Like Bowen losing to Boji, that is gonna be pretty cool. Kordesha versus Laret, and who wins? Yeah, looks like Kordecha could be quite competitive at the moment. But still, like we haven't seen enough of Kordecha yet, so I would say it's uh, still Laletin. I'm sure Laletin is in a pretty good shape. He was always training for to meet with Levan again. I'm sure he doesn't want to disappoint all of us, so... Kordeshan, uh, the one uh, Leighton must be pretty good right now. Okay, guys, we are one hour and ten minutes in. I'll probably finish with stream quite soon. So just let me know if you have any last questions. And they will most likely do it again. I still have uh, cannot do it through my phone yet, but thanks you, thank you all for uh, for the subscriptions, all the 900 subscribers already. I only need another hundred to uh, be able to stream from my phone. I think that would be pretty cool. All the results of Armour's Iron House. Sorry, Epe. I cannot tell you anything yet. Alan Zaloyev versus Bejda, right hand, who wins? Yeah, Alan Zaloyev is a mystery. We really want to see more of Alan. Such a beast. The way he crushed uh, Makarov is just so amazing. 
I wonder if Makarov is as good as he always was, or is he getting weaker? What's happening? That's a lot of elbow stretching. Yes, it is. It's plenty. Did I win in arm wars? Right, I won at least one round. That's what I can tell you. And I did not get injured. That's also good. I cannot tell you much more. He also beat Yanis like he was. Yeah. No, Alan Zoloyev clearly. Clearly on the top right now. I wish we could see more of his matches. Is a push press an affecting move? <clears throat> it is, it is. But also if you cannot finish immediately, maybe it's a bit hard. Tom Holland got smashed. Let's hope so, let's hope so. Terzi versus Allen at similar weight. Who wins? I guess we have to say, no, no, for sure. Allen looks like Allen. Terzi couldn't really beat Makaro while being heavier. Yeah, seems like Allen. Yeah, Allen just kind of showed us a totally different level of power. Even though he didn't seem he didn't seem as big as Makaro, for example. You know, Makaro is just a crazy, crazy being. Looks like a beast. Alan looked normal, looked like a normal guy, but he the strength was very apparent. Is Terzi natural? I don't know, but Terzi himself states that he is. So we have to believe him. Yeah, Alan was crazy. Where is the power coming from? Well, no, you can see that he's, uh, yeah, of course, the arms are quite big. But still, yeah. I like how yeah, every single muscle in his arm seemed to work very well. He's just crushing people in, um, in basic fundamentals. Like. Feels good. <clears throat> But okay, guys, I guess I'm almost done. Starting to lose my voice. Have a good evening. And see you next time. One more. See ya. Thanks for joining me today.